Hello everybody, welcome back to Great Job. Today we're going to be reviewing the XNEX graphics drawing tablet. This tablet was bought in a group of other cheap drawing tablets to review one by one, and then to be put in one epic battle right at the end to see which one comes out on top as the best cheap drawing graphics tablet that you can get. This one I believe clocked in at around $25, you know what I mean? Literally, completely space saving. Perfect unboxing experience. This is just a quick start guide. In the box, you get a connection cable, USB-C. You have a nib puller and an adapter for your phone, USB-C. Most phones are USB-C these days. All right, and then the pen, if I can get it out. Yes, okay. So this is the pen, it has a little arm loop on the side. So this is the tablet itself, the JetX Osu tablet. Actually, it's pretty presentable. This has been a really nice unboxing experience and everything was laid out nice. It was pretty concise and to the point, so honestly, no complaints. I want to start off by prefacing that these are my findings on these drawing tablets. You might find other results elsewhere. It's all based on perception and how you use the product and how you feel about it at the very end. I want to start off with the design of the tablet. One thing I noticed right out of the box is that it was very gamer-esque. It's very um, oriented towards gamers. As you can see by the hard edges and uh, jagged angles, it's very, very gamer-esque. And even the description on Amazon touted it as an OSU gaming tablet. Another thing that I noticed is that it's extremely thin. As you can see right here, it's basically just the PCB sandwiched in between two pieces of plastic, which is very reminiscent of the XP Pen G430 that I reviewed some years ago. And that's not the only design feature that it shares with that XP Pen. The XP Pen G430 also used this piece right here to house all the electronics, sans the five programmable hotkeys. Now they still do this with their Star 63, I think it's called. That's their main OSU tablet that they're selling right now. They also have the Deco series, which I'll be reviewing in this. I bought the Deco 01, I believe it was. Also a tiny budget OSU drawing tablet. If you notice here on the back, it's not much to look at. You got your rubber feet here so that it doesn't slide around on the table. Although it does still slide around a little bit. I noticed when I was playing OSU, my wrist would push it around a little bit here and there, which is a little unfortunate, but Overall, it does stay in place. Uh, other than that, you have the product sticker right here telling you what kind of product it is. Uh, it's upside down, my apologies for that. On the front here, you have a matte plastic front with indicators telling you where the active area is. You also have the five programmable hotkeys that I mentioned earlier. These are fully customizable and you can basically set anything you want to them, pan, zoom, brush, eraser, anything that you want. Um, the pen also has similar functionality, but we're gonna get to that after we get to this right here. The last thing I want to mention is the USB-C port right here. There we go, got it to focus. The last thing I want to mention is this USB-C port here. It's really well recessed in there and the cutout is actually on point. And when you plug in the cord to the tablet, it actually goes in with a really nice pop and it feels really nice and it feels mostly premium and it feels this and it feels that. This take sucks, I'm not gonna put it in. There's not much more to say about the tablet. You've seen basically every piece of it from the front to the back and the sides. So let's move on to the pen. I have it right here this time. This is the pen that you get with the XCNX. Uh, it's a pretty good pen overall. I would say there are a couple major issues that bring it down for me quite a bit. And we'll get to those as we continue on in the video. First, I wanna bring up the material. As you can see, it doesn't really look all that appealing. It's just a matte plastic tube with a tapered end to mimic a pen that you would find in a competition tablet. It's pretty hollow feeling and the matte plastic does not help the fact that it just feels cheap in the hand. It's pretty light. However, I do feel like they tried to make it feel more balanced in the hand by putting a little bit of weight at the top, which is what I think this is for. That's why there's that little seam right there, kind of like screwed on or tapped in, and there must be a weight in there because it does feel more balanced in the hand than you would expect. That being said, it's still very, very light in the hand and can kind of be uncomfortable to draw with, especially for long periods of time because literally it's just 
a plastic tube. There's no grip on it. There's no rubber coating or anything to help it feel more comfortable while you're drawing. So I would say that's a negative as well, unfortunately. Next, I want to talk about the nib. As you can see, it's a lot thicker than a lot of the competition going on right now. XB Pen and Huion have stepped up their game when it comes to drawing nibs, thankfully, because I remember Huion was kind of lacking in that area quite a while ago. Um, it's pretty easy to pull out. You just got to use your nails. Unfortunately, I do not have any, so I'm not going to pull it out for you. But that's okay because I would prefer to transition into the springy feeling that the pen gives you. A lot of cheaper drawing tablets will use this as a trick to make it feel a little bit more premium when you're drawing with it, but this one just goes way over the top. And don't get me wrong, everybody puts springs in their pens, but this one is just over-exaggerated. It takes no effort at all to push it down, and it feels like it springs back in the most unnatural way. So when you're, please focus, oh my god. So when you're drawing with it actively, you can genuinely feel when you're pushing down on it and when the actuation begins and when you lift it up, it'll shoot back into place. The spring is too heavy and I feel like they're using it to compensate for just how cheap it feels in the hand. Now, when I did my testing, it wasn't as bad as I initially thought it was going to be because when I pulled this out of the box, it felt really, really cheap to me. And I believe I said that during the unboxing. If I didn't, I didn't. It was just something that I remember thinking when I was unboxing this. So it didn't live up to expectations. And that's a good thing in this case, but it also didn't. Exceed expectations. It's just in this weird middle ground where it doesn't quite feel right in the hand, but it's still a little bit comfortable to draw with for long periods. I already have like an indent right here in my my middle finger where, you know, I've been writing and drawing for such a long time. It naturally rests, as you can see, in this indent in my finger. And over time, this hard plastic will definitely wear on my middle finger. And it's just really uncomfortable. It's not, it's not comfortable. The Apple Pencil does the same thing, and I have to put a grip on it after I take it off the charger and then take the grip off when I want to put it back on because it's magnetized, you know, unlike the old Apple Pencil, but that's for another day. That's just about it for the pen. Overall, I would rate this maybe a five out of 10 when it comes to drawing tablet pens. It's not the greatest, but it's not the best. It's literally middle of the road. It's nothing special. The, the spring in the nib and the hollowness and the cheap feeling materials just kill it for me. And that's kind of a theme overall for this tablet. It goes well with it, looks nice, but the buttons, if you can hear, let me put it up to my mic. Those do not, those are, those are chaunchiest, oh dude. Those are the chaunchiest buttons I have ever encountered. That isn't to say that it's a horrible experience overall, but I will say the thing that killed it and brought this tablet down is the software experience. A lot of cheap tablet manufacturers don't know how to do this right. And they always try to copy off other manufacturers, but they just can't get it right. And Huion and XB Pen used to be, they used to be culprits. They used to be doing the same dish that these people are doing. So the driver experience really brought this tablet down for me. There are a lot of good things about the driver, but there are also a lot of negative things about the drivers. First off, I want to say that everything works really well up front. You can plug it in, install the drivers, and start using it in minutes if you, you know, have the know-how. If you go straight to the driver's site, plug it in, download them, install them, and then restart your computer, you'll be up in maybe about 10 to 15 minutes tops. And then you can just start drawing in most drawing applications. Paint tool size still has an issue with the pressure sensitivity, but I feel like it's just because that's, you know, kind of an indie program. CSP is as well, but it's a little bit more fleshed out than paint tool size is, but we'll get to that. So the main thing about the drivers that upset me was the Windows Ink implementation. I don't know why tablet manufacturers still implement these things into the drivers. I think it's like an automatic thing that has to be built in, but it's horrible. It's horrendous. Even when you're drawing, there is a noticeable lag to when you touch the tip to the tablet and to where the tip actually starts moving and drawing. And this is apparent in any application, not just Photoshop, 
not just Osu, it's apparent in every single app that you're using, even your desktop. Um, basically what had happened is I was tired of the, I was showing off how Windows Ink was messing with the, the uh, cursor when you put it down onto a tablet to click something. And I didn't, I didn't see it in the program at first, so I had to go back through it. Anyway, I was just um, trying to figure out how to get rid of Windows Ink. I'm glad I went back into the program because if you can see here, it says Windows Ink. I was literally so oblivious I didn't see that before. I'm glad I went back and looked because I would have said, oh, this sucks, and not really, you know, um, given it a fair option. So it's fortuitous that I went back and made sure that I was speaking of the right thing. So now that we have that out of the way, maybe now, It'll actually work better. You will find that when you put the pen tip down, it takes a little bit for it to move and it's very off-putting, especially if you've been using these types of things for a long time. Now, I may be stupid, that's probably what happened, but I had a really hard time finding the option. It was literally hidden in plain sight, it was on the front page, it was Windows Ink, I think it was relative, and then it was actual, it was like a one-to-one -one drawing experience. Now, you can only select one monitor to use as your active area when Windows Ink is on. Other than that, you cannot do that. If you're using multiple monitors and you activate the one-to-one, -one, it'll take up the entire area. That includes all of your monitors, and you cannot change it unless you go to Windows Ink mode or relative, but even then, that doesn't work too well. I tried all the settings, I tried doing it the way I would usually do it, and it just did not work right for me. So I wound up having to use the one-to-one -one for everything except Osu, and even then, Osu only barely worked with the, act with the specific active area. And even if you set that for the relative, it won't change the monitor that it displays on. It only happens for full screen programs that are registering as full screen, like a video game. So, this tablet's drivers has something that a lot of the other competitors don't have, and that's switchable profiles. For instance, you can set a specific profile for OSU to have the active area this small, so when you switch out of OSU, it'll go back to how it was normally. And then you can go to Photoshop and have the active area this big, and it'll switch out when you leave that program back to how it was originally. This is awesome. This is what I want to see in more and more cheap graphics tablets, because a lot of the time, not being able to have this functionality is a killer for me. Now, Huion kind of has this, but you have to save it out and load it in. It's not as convenient as just opening the program and then boom, it switches, and then leaving the program and then boom, it switches. It's very well implemented. However, the Windows Ink implementation needs to be fixed before I can recommend this tablet based on the drivers alone. Another thing I wanted to talk about driver-wise was the pressure sensitivity on the pen. I don't know if it's a driver thing or a pen thing, but I want to mention it right now. It's really hard to get all of that pressure sensitivity. It's really hard. I am, I draw very hard. Like I'm a very heavy handed artist. So when I tried to set it as hard as I can to where I had to press down pretty firmly to get it to register for those lighter ones so I could have a little bit more control over it, it just did not work. My lines were instantly every time and it was just almost unusable. So I had to turn it all the way down so it would enable all of the pressures. It's unfortunate because I'm a heavy-handed artist and I can't do too well when I have to press it lightly or I have to make light strokes. I'm just, I've been drawing like the, I've been drawing like this for years. People have tried to tell me how to do it. I just, I can't, I'm a heavy-handed artist. That's just how it is and the pressure sensitivity just isn't there for this one. It's there, but it's not there, if that makes sense. Next, I wanna talk about the Osu gameplay experience. This one is a little weird. When I was playing Osu, I noticed that there was a very slight delay in when the mouse moved with the cursor. Okay, 
I think I actually have enough ed evidence or enough um, use of the tablet in Osu specifically to determine that there is a slight delay on the pen. It's almost like the pen is like gliding across and following the cursor in like a delayed motion, like almost, almost like um, pointer acceleration is on. And you can kind of see it in, my, in the motion of my hand as it moves on the screen here. It's really like, if I move it now, it's not as precise as it could be. It's supposed to be one-to-one, -one, but I noticed there was a very, very slight delay, like there is an acceleration that I couldn't disable. I have the Windows acceleration off, and I also have acceleration off in OSU, obviously. I turn acceleration off anywhere that I can, and it still felt like the pen was, or the pointer was lagging behind the pen, which is unfortunate because overall, it's an accurate tablet, and I was having a ton of fun playing OSU. There's also the Windows ink issue. When I'm trying to set a certain area for OSU, it always turns Windows ink back on, and I have to tab out of OSU, turn Windows ink off, and then go back into OSU, and then it's fine. It has the active area that I want without the input lag when you press down on the button. And even if you say, oh, I'm a dragger, oh, I don't use the nib. Okay, I'm not a dragger. I don't drag my tip. I like to use the tip to select songs because I don't like taking my hand off the tablet. It's just, it's a nuisance, okay? And the only time I do is when I use the arrow keys to select songs, and that's not as often as you would think. Speaking of Osu, one thing I did forget to mention is that there's actually an Osu mode which disables the left click altogether so that you can quite literally turn on Osu and then play exactly how I was just describing it, where you take the nib out and you just drag it. Osu mode literally disables the left click so you don't even have to do that. You can just add that to the Osu profile start up osu and then it'll automatically go into osu mode which actually helps a lot with the windows ink issue but like i said i'm not a dragger okay and i like using the left click on the tablet to select songs so i had to find ways around it i did but it's a little bit cumbersome your mileage may vary depending on the release of the driver and how exactly your computer reacts to the tablet overall i would give this tablet a 7 out of 10 it's closer to a 6 than a 7 just because the drivers and the pen are lackluster. Overall, it's a great package. The packaging was really nice. The design is really cool looking, fits on any desk. Um, the pen is okay and comfortable for about five to six hours of art, depending on how you're feeling that day. And the OSU experience is generally okay if you put it in OSU mode and prefer not to use the tip to select your songs. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a long time coming. My last video was over a year ago and my life has been so hectic since then. 